Hey guys, what's going on? Third Street Reactions here. I'm Shane, and I'm back here with Star Wars The Bad Batch Season 1, Episode 3. So, man, I'm really liking this show so much because Clone Wars is one of my favorite Star Wars properties. And this is essentially just picking up where the Clone Wars left off. It has so much of Clone Wars DNA in it, in terms of like the feel of it. It makes me love it more. And honestly, <clears throat> I was the least hyped about this announcement. Honestly, I really was. I was the least hyped about The Mandalorian as well, and that ended up being one of my favorite things ever. You know, I had an interesting conversation with Zach earlier, because he grew up loving Star Wars, and then, you know, things happened in life, and he'd just been out of the fandom for so long. And, you know, when we watched Star Wars when we were younger, it just gave us exactly the kind of escapism that we needed to stimulate us um, creatively and intellectually. And it bonded us, you know? And, you know, there's things as a fan, and I've been in the fandom for so long, that maybe I forgive easier than him because of, because of certain life circumstances, but also because I've been in it and I've been loving it as a fan ever since. And he's trying to pick back up where he was. You know what I mean? And he was just saying, like, I think I need some more mature things. So, you know, and it wasn't like, I had to understand, like, it's not like, oh, Zach thinks some of these things are objectively bad. He just needs to be stimulated in a way at, at this point in his walk and in, in his life, you know, to fulfill him creatively and, and intellectually. So, you know, and I was, I kept thinking about, because we're going through the Clone Wars now, how it progresses and it gets darker and darker as the audience grows up. And then, of course, we're on this show right now, and, and, it, and I think it's right there. You know, maybe not some of the darkest stuff, but I think it's such a contrast between this and episode season one of The Clone Wars. That being said, make sure you guys check out The Clone Wars and just be with us in our journey, and I'm sure Zach is going to slowly shift gears. I'm really excited. I can't wait for him to watch this show. Um, that being said, last episode, The Marauder, or The Havoc Marauder, the Clone 99, Clone Force 99 ship flew down, flew to Salukamai, and they found, without first running into some repurposed B1 battle droids, they discovered Cut Laquane. Well, they didn't discover because Hunter always knew he was there. My problem was, how did he know he was there? Uh, we just had to zoom off camera. They had some kind of a relationship through Rex. And speaking of Rex, he was just there the day before. So I think they're trying to find Rex. I'm pretty sure he'll be in the show. And I'm really excited about that. We see the Republic slowly shift from being a Republic to an Empire. We see basically the clone troopers are kind of like bullies now. We see that um, now they have chain codes, which we see and hear about chain codes in Star Wars The Mandalorian with chain codes on the ship. And Boba Fett himself having a chain code where you see that his father's armor, uh, you know, his father's uh, chain code was in the armor as well. So, um, just great consistency here with a, a Lucasfilm, a, a Lucas uh, story group. And uh, yeah, I'm just really appreciative of the show. Um, Omega decided not to go with Cut and, and their family. She's now a part of, officially a part of, I guess, the Bad Batch. She's going to be traveling with them. So, I think we're just going to jump in now and see what happens next. All right, guys? You want to take our food too? Yeah. Uh, no, no thanks. You keep it. Okay. I like Omega. Yeah, I guess but I love Wrecker. Get ready for your first crash landing. Crash? Omega, strap in. Well, if this is the Clone Wars, I wouldn't be worried. Thank God the gonk droid is okay. Let's cross her weapon kit. Ooh. Uh, fine. I'll say it. I kind of miss him. He shot you, remember? Ah, I sure do. That hurt. <laughs> May I present our first elite squad. Top soldiers from across the galaxy. Imagine. More squads like this being trained by skilled clones. Okay. <coughs> hey. Careful. Those capacitors hold massive charge. 
My Knox. What was that? I'm a little busy at the moment. Shooting on the power cables. They got the breathing masks on, so it reminds me of Empire. Okay. Those uh -huh. are Well those weren't there when we landed. They're not my knock. Whatever that thing was. It was bigger. What the fuck? They're like Minoc. They're chewing on the. They're ingesting power. The creature is most likely an Ordo Moon Dragon. Ordo Moon Dragon. Rekka, stay here. I'll go after the dragon and get our pot back. Oh, I hope he didn't damage his chip and he's gonna go Order 66 on us. With the Empire, I get paid, I get fed, and I have a roof over my head. Okay. That's more than the Republic ever did for me. Well, okay, there you go. Clone Force 99 failed. It shall be done. Well, Clone Force 99 isn't a good example of the clones. Oh, shit. Get our people on the shuttle! Now! And Crosshair is leading them, right? I imagine. Oh, wait there. Some alien's gonna pop out of those little fucking holes. Oh my god. Ugh. Moon dragon. Okay, it's not as scary. What are you doing, kid? Go get the others. This is ridiculous. I understand it's a kid's show and she's gonna succeed, but I would not go down there. I'm a man, a large man, sideways. I wouldn't go. Oh! They're picking him off, man. We were promised transport off world. That's all. Then you're of no use to the Empire. What are you doing? Herrera's fighters are dead. These are civilians. We should bring them in. He's right. Those weren't our orders. Forget our orders. You want to know why they put me in charge? It's because I'm willing to do what needs to be done. Dude. Good soldiers follow orders. That's, that's bad, man. Finish the mission. Okay. So she's figuring out that it just wants to consume power. The clone commander's new squad has followed through where his brethren did not. Further proof that this initiative has potential. Well, that's one damn sample. Program systems are up and running. Yeah, it took you long enough. And where have you been? Hey, kid, come with me. Cover your eyes. <laughs> then he fucking Order 66 is her. Thank God. <laughs> hey, open him. What? What is this? Oh, okay. It's a little bedroom. It's your own room. Well, that's cool. I never had my own room before. Well, that's nice. Well, you're part of this squad now too. I don't like the word filler because I don't feel like it's filler and I have a small sample size before I can kind of judge how these episodes are. You know what I mean? Like they created an arc and it has a beginning, middle and end. You know, I don't think like, you know, some TV shows up, up until recently they are always kind of spinning their wheels. I think we saw it on screen, Wrecker bumps his head. It didn't look like it was really anything serious but... I think like two or three times he complained about his head. It made me think that something's going to happen and his chip is going to malfunction. And we're going to see some uh, uh, Order 66-like behavior come from him. I hope not because that'll be heartbreaking because now it's pulling on my heartstrings. Having ha Wrecker make like a bedroom for Omega and bond with her. And I think we're going to see more of these little moments between them. And I think we're going to see more of those little moments between 
her and Tech as well. Because right now the relationship is kind of her and Hunter. And man, her going out there with Hunter, that's a brave thing to do. It was great to see her in action. It was awesome to see, you know, Hunter explain to her in the audience once again, hey, we are specialized clones, so you might not be able to do exactly what I can do, kid. But nevertheless, she did use her intelligence to track. It might not be to the the high ability of Hunter. She was able to track the Ordo Moon Dragon to his little lair. It was giving me all these alien vibes too. I don't know why, but she was down there. And I know for creature designs, they just want something that's cool before they want something that's appropriate. You know, if you believe in evolution, I guess my question is, you know, in, 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 in this world, certainly evolution is the reason why life exists. Why would a creature evolve that kind of ferocious in the teeth and everything like that and the jumping ability and the strength and everything if he primarily consumed energy from like electricity or power or like raw energy? And, you know, maybe that's not the only way, but if it wasn't the only way, I'm pretty sure it would have tacked and eaten Omega. Just, you know, I know that's nitpicking, you know, a science fiction fantasy show for children, but I'm just, I'm just a question, I okay? Just a question. Also, when Hunter got his mask knocked off, well, one thing we never, I'm trying to think. We don't really have an example in Star Wars of the vacuum of space, or, I mean, it's joked about in Star Wars Rogue One with uh, 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 K2SO and Diego Luna's character, whatever his name is, about, you know, like we don't have a character on screen really die or pass out because he can't breathe. You know what I mean? I, I am aware of Dr. Afra from the comics, you know, and Vader jettisoning her out at the end of that first arc. I'm well aware of that. And obviously, Star Wars The Force Unleashed, um, we have a little bit of that there. So, but we, I guess in the main entries, we never really see it. And I know they're not in space per se, but they're in a hostile environment where he can't breathe. And they have the breathers, just like an empire. And just like an empire, they're landing on a place in the dark, and of course it wasn't the Minoc, it was the Ordo Moon Dragons, and instead of, you know, Han and Leia and Chewie, we had these guys. I understand that this part of the episode was for the development of their characters to grow, and they're obviously using that scene, they're playing off the Empire scene, because it's nostalgic and it's fun and it's cool. I'm actually kind of glad it wasn't Minoc, because then it would have been really repetitive. And we also learned that it was Admiral Rampart that came up with the chain codes it's his system that the Empire is now using. So, and it's also his idea, like he's advising Tarkin to like have these clones lead and train these new soldiers. So we get to see the new SEAL Team 6. And it's interesting because, I don't know, I feel like it's not done well, this, this little social experiment. Because... Well, for one thing, like they're, they have such a small sample size of, like they're, they're basing a lot of what they think about clones off of the Bad Batch and how they were great fighters, but they didn't follow orders, even though the vast majority of clones followed orders and the vast majority of clones are incredible. I think initially George intended the Stormtroopers to be badass. You know, Alec Guinness' character, I mean, Ben Kenobi says, only stormtroopers are so accurate, you know, in in, uh, in A New Hope. So, it didn't, yeah. Like, I, and I think, you know, he made a movie for kids, and, you know, when you have the heroes running around, they get shot at, and they never get shot. I think that's, it's as simple as that. Then, of course, like, now the fans have embraced the fact that clones, even, it's even a part of the canon now. In the canon of Star Wars, The Mandalorian, they talk about how bad they are bad shooters they are because Mayfield Bill Burr's character is a sniper and uh Din Jaren's like oh that's not very impressive and he's like I wasn't a stormtrooper wise ass it's just a weird little problem in Star Wars in the prequel trilogy we get to see them being badass and they never miss because they're shooting robots that are villains that we don't care about and then in this in the original trilogy they're shooting at us our people our friends that we you know and they can't get hit like, from what I've seen, clone troopers are, in every way, better than um, recruits. And especially if they're inscripted. Like, I, I didn't really have an idea that there was much conscription going on. I knew they had academies, and I knew people joined them willingly. 
But Rampart is right. I think people who do join willingly are definitely motivated. I'm not saying that they can't be great soldiers. It's just that I think what they're doing with the Kaminoans, like it's working so well, why mess it up? And like, how do they train? Okay, I'm sorry. I'll answer my own question. These guys, they were soldiers for the Republic. And yeah, like a lot of people who are kind of in the dark about, you know, the Empire and them enslaving people and genocide and enslaving Wookiees and everything else. Um, and, the, you know, the Tarkin Sphere Doctrine. Like, yeah, the Empire treats, for the most part, its soldiers pretty good, I feel like. You know, this guy basically said, oh, the, the Empire, they clothe, they, you know, they give me food, they give me money, they give me my own sleeping quarters. And that's more than the Republic ever did. So besides the fact that the clones had their own base where they would stay at on uh, Kamino, the Republic uh, soldiers who were volunteers who were part of the Republic Army, uh, they didn't have such a good deal, I guess. Yeah. I guess I want to stop talking about that because it's just, I don't know, it's just a weird topic. Um, I think we're eventually going to see the part, like I just want to see how they rationalize it. The only thing I can think of is Crosshair eventually kind of wakes up, betrays everyone, or betrays the Empire, and they say, oh, okay, so this is why clones are bad. But it's just one example. And there's just, if you're going by odds, there's an overwhelming like, high percentage of clones that follow Order 66 that are well-trained. So, yeah, it's just, it just yeah, it's a, it's a weird thing for me. I guess I'm going to have to kind of allow myself, and I guess the story isn't told yet, so maybe I should just shut my mouth. Okay, so I always love Saw Gerrera when Saw Gerrera's on screen. Um, we didn't get to see him in this episode, but he was mentioned. I thought it was just brutal that they killed all those people. I thought for sure Saw or someone was going to come step in and save, you know, these people, these families. They all got killed in, in pretty brutal ways. Yeah, it showed a guy get shot in the chest. It was showing, it was like behind like a, uh, it was like he was shooting like their heat patterns, you know, but he was shooting those guys. It was it was crazy, and we got to see how brutal Crosshair is. Like, he keeps going inside his little that little chamber where I think they're influencing him with that chip, because it's like he's it's like Tarkin wants to have the clones or probably anyone who serves the Empire to have a complete lack of free will. So, just more about the themes of free uh, of freedom of choice versus predestination. Okay, or subservience or whatever. And I did like how that stormtrooper, one of those guys who said, hey, ignore the clone, we're going to take these civilians in. I really think that was the right call. I mean, you know, I really do. I, I thought I thought Crosshair, that was unneeded brutality. And that's just something that I don't think is going to work in a civilized society. And I understand the Star Wars universe is a little different. But normally when you have a tyrannical hierarchy, they don't last very long. <laughs> and I guess this one only lasts for 20-something years, which isn't very long. And I wonder if Crosshair knows that he's essentially training his replacements. I mean, Rampart has the idea that clones and, you know, the Imperial troopers that are conscripted or volunteer, that they're going to work together. But obviously we know that doesn't happen, or if it does, it's not really... I don't, I don't think that's what happens. <laughs> Okay, but what's interesting is the clones talked about the next phase of the plan. Jango's original DNA is degrading, so they need one of uh, Clone Force 99's DNA. At least that's what I read from it. And they said they only need one. And to me, that's crosshair. So, what is the next phase of their plan? You know, and, and the idea that, you know, I guess it makes sense for me. I think it would be cool if they're just trying to clone a Force user. And that's, like, I'm having... You know these suspicions that Omega is a part of that a, a part of that deal, a part of that experiment. Like maybe she's got some kind of latent force abilities, or at least maybe they tried with her. I don't I don't know. I, there's something about her special that hasn't been revealed to the audience yet. I really love Omega. I love how she figured out that this thing consumes raw energy. She threw the flashlight. She's officially part of the crew. She's contributing in a good way. Overall, I thought it was a pretty good episode. It wasn't my favorite out of the three that I've watched. There's some good moments in, you know? And the question for me is Wrecker's headache. You know, what happened to him? Like, we just see him like... I mean, Wrecker's tough. He's a big, strong guy. I wonder if when he hit his head, if, yeah, if it did something to his chip and now he's going to start slowly the indoctrination. I guess it wouldn't be indoctrination. 
but he's slowly going to start perceiving the order of order six, the order sixty six initiative as correct and something that he must follow and his free will that he has over you know his life starts to degrade like Django's DNA is start, starting to degrade yeah I don't know and also I'm calling it right now I think we're gonna see Saw Guerrera get grievously injured at some point before the show's over okay so hold me to that all right I don't have too much else to say um, I really like this episode not as much as the other three but you know we got a long road ahead of us, and I'm in, baby. Didn't think I was going to be into this show, and I was wrong. I'm really glad to be back doing Star Wars, new Star Wars, sequel to one of my favorite Star Wars properties of all time, The Clone Wars. And just to get some little consistencies, like chain codes, and just stuff like that. It's just, it's just awesome. Um, guys, I think that's it. Order Moon Dragons. Guys, thank you so much for watching my reaction and my breakdown review of this episode. If you like Third Street Reactions, you want to support us, go check out The Clone Wars. Check out all our other shows. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification. Leave a comment down below. Blah. Sorry. Blow. No. Oh.